Well, welcome, welcome to the kitchen. I'm Peggy, and we have some good recipes today that are easy, fun, good for you, and not all that expensive. So now, how does that sound? I think that's pretty good. And Lisa Marie is here with me. And of course, the name of her business is the Loafing Around Bakery. And it's located in Greer, South Carolina. And she brought all these fun cakes and muffins and goodies and bread and Banana all that. And bread pudding and oh. cake rolls. Just showing you some of the things that we do. Homemade fudge out there on the front and of the table. Make a little candy really as well. top grade We use ingredients. quality ingredients. Yeah. We try to uh, stay with all natural as close as we can yeah. within the bakery. Yeah. And then we yeah. do custom work. Folks need birthday cakes or they need, um, they've got company they coming need. and they need help with catering that meal. We okay. do that as well. We do everything okay. from a small dinner for two all the way up to a wedding for 250 people. We do, we do it all. Well, it looks good and I want everybody to see it. But you brought something, one fish, two dish. Yes. I like that. We, we, uh, we have salmon is, is okay. the fish of, of the day today. And I wanted to offer two options. Some folks, you know, they're stew people. They like soups. Yeah. So we're going to do a salmon stew. And then um, I've got a simple marinade for salmon okay. that you can cook on, on the stovetop in a pan or you could put it on a grill. Or you could even put it in the oven and bake okay. it. It's a very, so the, very any way flexible you want to do it. Right. The basic Whatever recipe is Whatever is easiest there. for you to do. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up the marinade. We're going to let the salmon just sit and, and marinate in this bag. Salmon nowadays comes in these wonderful little pre-serve packets. They've already skinned it. So there's, you know, it's, it's, it's even easier to use than it used to be. Um, especially for our recipes. So what I'm going to do first is in the Ziploc, I'm going to put um, about a third of a here. cup of uh, brown sugar. Oh, here, and, you know, brown sugar is kind of sticky. I can hold so. it open. Oh, that'd here. be great. Okay. There we go. We're just going to put about a third of a cup down in there. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll mix this all together right in the bag. I'm going to put in a third of a cup of water. Now, you know, in my business, Wait, everything that looks this, dangerous. This is soy sauce. And, <laughs> Our soy sauce comes in, in five gallon containers, and rather than bring that whole five gallons, I just poured some so into it. At home, them. if you have some soy right, sauce. Right, just regular old soy how sauce. Much? About a third of a cup. So and it's a know, third of a cup of everything. Third of a cup of everything, and we're going to put a little oil in it too. Also, about a third of a cup. And you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't measure. I, I just know. eyeball you know, till it looks cooks, right. A lot of times they don't measure. They just kind of. You can measure it, and the recipe that I, that you would write in for yeah. has the actual Everything. ingredients. This well, is garlic see. powder, just some garlic powder to give it a little flavor. Ooh. So we've got soy and garlic, and then we're going to put in some lemon pepper. You could use lemon juice and pepper okay. if you have that, but I have this at home sitting on the counter. So I just eyeball it about a tablespoon. You could do more or less to taste. And then what we'll and do is... And I guess if you didn't want the garlic, you could leave it out. Exactly. Somebody doesn't really like it. Or onion powder, you could put that in okay. instead. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the zip top. And we're going to let that air help us that's in there. And we're just going to mix it up. Even less dishes to and wash, that way Peggy. you don't have a bowl to wash. Right. That's right. Because we're going to take it out, we're going to fry it up, and then put it on the plate and serve it. I have opened, if you'll hold that for oh, me. yeah. I have opened up these little packets of salmon that they have at the store. And it's uh, that would this be is like one wild serving. caught salmon, and it comes pre-proportioned. So we're gonna the the recipe when you write in for it calls for one and a half pounds of salmon. That's about four of these. These these weigh each about six ounces, which is a heart healthy portion of fish. Yeah. You don't want to have so much, you know, fish that that that. that it takes your whole plate. You know, we, we talk all these these times about how portion control is important in our diet, and by having it pre-portioned out. Not only do you not have to cut it, but you don't have to, um, let me wipe my hey, fingers there. To, We're gonna you zip. don't put anything else in there. I'm not going to oh, put anything okay. else in there. I'm going to squeeze out the extra air. And then we're just going to kind of shake it around a little bit. And if we were at home, we'd stick this in the refrigerator for about two you, hours. You, oh, you could even do it the night before. Do it the night before. Leave it in the refrigerator and then all just, night. Right, just stick, stick it in a bowl and let it sit all night long. And we're going we're gonna to let it sit and marinate while we all start right. the stew. All right. Because it takes about, um, the stew itself from start to finish takes about 15, 20 minutes. And then to cook salmon by the slice on the grill in the pan or in the oven takes about 10 minutes. So I figure we'd get that marinating and okay. let it get happy okay. while we start our, our stew here. I've got a little bacon grease in the pot. I cooked up about two ounces of bacon. I just crisped it up so I could get that flavor because that flavor is what makes the salmon stew 
so yummy. Now, a lot of times... So when that's you, what you have in here. Right. It isn't very much. It's not very much at all. It's a nonstick pot, yeah. so you don't need much, and it'll give us the flavor that we're looking for. I've got two bunches of scallions, and I like to cut them on the bias. It makes for a pretty presentation. And we're going to cut all but a couple handfuls, because um, we'll use the handfuls for garnish on the top of the soup, excuse me, when we serve it. So I'm just going to set that aside. We're going to put these, the scallions right down here in this pot and let them start cooking. And once they start cooking, we're going to add in some corn and we're going to add in some garlic and some seasonings that give it flavor. And we're going to use some whole milk and canned milk instead of oh, really? flour. Oh, right, um, just okay. evaporated milk because evaporated milk has <clears throat> less fat than whipping cream. Now it's this the, is just starting, is that Yes, right? it is, yes, it's going. We're gonna, we're gonna let it get going here. I'm gonna bump that heat up a little more. It should start here in just a second to really cook. And then once it really starts, we're gonna add in the corn and we'll add in some garlic and some seasoning and get it going. Now it's starting. There we now go, so right. you can hear it, mm -hmm. it's talking to us. So we're gonna add in um, three cloves of finely chopped garlic or about one tablespoon. We're going to add in a cup of corn. I'm now, gonna, can you use uh, canned or frozen or does it matter? One or fresh, cut off the cob. I'll let you start stirring those for me if you would, ma'am. We're going to add... Um, oh, it smells good. Mm. If you have fresh thyme in your garden growing, thyme stays green year round. Mm -hmm. um, we had some work done, so my whole herb garden, I have to so start over got... this year. But So I picked up some, some thyme. And, uh, one teaspoon of fresh equals one tablespoon of dried. Okay. So we're going to put a tablespoon in or a teaspoon of fresh. Fish loves thyme. Fish also um, loves uh, I love bay leaves. Smell. I, I like do it. too. Mm, it's good. We're going to put one bay leaf, one small bay leaf in. I'm going to go ahead and let that start. And the reason we're putting it in before we add everything else is so it can start heating up. When you heat up the herbs with the oil, it releases the natural oils in the herbs so that they have more flavor, you'll get more of the flavor into your food as opposed to um, it staying in the dried herb itself. Um, missed that guy. Okay, okay I'm gonna put in um, an eighth of a teaspoon, which is a pinch, of crushed red pepper. Oh. So it's got a little heat to it. You can leave this out, you know, just, just do it to, to taste. Give it a little pizzazz. A little, a little zing in the background, if okay. you will. Okay. Um, and that, that helps it have the, the it, it brings out the flavor of the other herbs, believe it or not. It's like salt and pepper. It's a complementary spice. It's not okay. there to take over the whole dish. Um, we're going to add uh, three cups of milk. And I just picked up local milk. This is actually four. This seems four. like such a strange combination. It'll all come milk together. In that. It's a chowder. Or it's okay. a stew. We're gonna add potatoes okay. as well. So okay. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat down some. Yeah, we better. And and we're she's gonna, not gonna measure that, but you want three cups. Want three cups. <laughs> okay. We'll peek down in the jar there and see how much we've got left. Now that's, that's about, whole milk. That's whole isn't milk. It? You, don't, you can yeah. use whatever milk you, you have. Could? Milk is milk. And if you're on a, if you're on a, if you're watching your calories and you're watching your fat grams, you could use fat-free okay. milk. Um, okay. It'll be just a little bit thinner soup. I'm also going to put in one can evaporated milk instead of cream. If you were going to use heavy okay. whipping cream, you'd use two thirds of a cup. And I love heavy whipping cream. I cook with it all the time in the bakery. We use it for all kinds of stuff. But I don't need to eat it all the time. So no. I, that's why I suggest the evaporated milk because it is a great substitute. Now I know that's looking kind of funny there. You're thinking, hmm, that's not really much of a soup, but we're getting ready to put the real good stuff into it. I'm gonna add um, some pre-cooked diced red potatoes. And I cooked these last night because trying to cook them all on the Yeah, and you left, TV, of course, you leave the peeling on. That's what makes them so yeah. wonderful. That's where yeah. the nutrition is and in the potato. How much is that, three? That's about two cups, two to three cups. It's a little okay. less than two cups, and I'm just gonna get it out here so it doesn't splash. I'm going to kind of let it lay in gently. We're going to stir that in. And then I'm going to cut these salmon filet into cubes. And the beautiful thing about these filet being pre-skinned is we don't have to get our knife under we it and skin them ourselves. It. Right. No. It's so easy to cut. So I'm just going to chunk them into cubes. 
So you actually, oh, that makes it easy. And how, this would serve what? probably three, four people, and it doubles beautifully. You could triple it. You know, if you okay. the, the bigger your group or the smaller your group, you can even cut it in half and go smaller with it. Um, so I'm just going to cut these into what I like to think of as bite-sized pieces here, about an inch square. Now, if you go to your fishmonger and he has salmon with the fish on it, it's at a fish place, they'll take it off for you. If you go to your store and you end up with salmon at home, you would lay your salmon flat, skin side against the cutting board. Keep your hand flat so you don't cut yourself and you would run your knife between the salmon and the oh. skin. That's why I like these prepackaged because they're already made. They're already skinned. Um, so I'm going to drop those in there and we're just going to let it simmer for a few minutes and we'll check it in just a little bit to... Uh... Okay, now, if what would you serve this with? This? I would serve it with a big hunk of homemade bread, some homemade garlic toast, or a roll, a salad on the side would be good. You have a full meal. You can have a full meal, yes, yes. It's got a protein, it's got a dairy, it's got vegetables. So it actually by itself is a complete dish. Um, you could add other vegetables to it if you didn't want to use scallions and you wanted to use celery and onion, you could use that if you wanted to use um, a different kind of potato instead of red potato because all you have is white potatoes, that would work. It's a very flexible dish. You know, I, I try so to design use things. Use your that, imagination. And what you words. have in your pantry. You know, if you only have broccoli florets in the freezer, throw, and you them, in. throw them in. Exactly. Okay. Right, um, I'm with you. It's, it's very flexible as far as what okay. you can do. Now we are going to take a break while this is heating up, okay? And if you would like this, we, Lisa Marie is so sweet and she's brought all of this out here. All you have to do, if you can send us that self-addressed stamped envelope to the Peggy Denny Show, Post Office Box 1616, Greenville, South Carolina, 29602. And the number is 775. Now that's an easy one to remember. Number 775. One fish, two fish. And for this time of year, it's perfect. So if you'd like these, or you can click on PeggyDenny.com, there they are. And we're happy to share with you. And these are wholesome. They're not terribly expensive. And you see how easy it is. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 